Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ali Vaez. I'm the Senior Sales Director here at Moxie Works, and it is my pleasure to co-host this webinar today with the one and only Josh Vegan. Today, we've got a jam-packed agenda. We're primarily going to be concentrating on how we want to collect data. We want to concentrate on how we want to categorize contacts and know their trigger points so we can effectively market to them. We want to talk a little bit about knowing what content to share, when and why. And finally, we're going to talk about why unsubscribes are a good thing. What? They are a good thing. I promise. Josh will put a little bit of color on that. Without further ado, though, I'm going to turn it over to the man of the hour, Mr. Josh Vegan. Away you go, Josh. Alice, so great to see you and full of energy as always. And guys, don't forget that throughout the course of today, you get a chance you can put in any questions that you want, put it in the chat, put it into the question box. And Ali and I will make sure that we come to answer those at the end of today's session. Uh, one of the great conversations for us to really learn from is to think a little bit about, you know, this database revolution, about what we've been doing in building these great real estate businesses for decades now, and how to really drive long-term real estate results as a great real estate agent. And the skill, without a doubt, is to think that the size of your network is really the size of your net worth. And if you're in a position that you can actually build a really good quality database, it makes a big difference to your business. Now, I know that when I first started as a real estate trainer, I had my first ever person that I put into my database. Uh, one of my clients, still a client today, a guy by the name of George Saffer in Sydney. And actually I remember putting him into the database and growing that to two and getting that to three and getting that to four and getting that to 5,000 people. And you get the idea that naturally you start to build from one and then you can grow that to be a really significant database. But it is important because data is equal in the new economy and now privacy is the new luxury. And what we mean by that is that there is plenty of data services that you can go to where you can buy access to leads or literally where you can be given leads or you can even buy access to information to track down someone. We can go and have a quick look and try to find out their mobile number of them, you know, based off a street address or even their email address based off a street address. And it's pretty amazing when you start to think that if data is equal, and the only thing that's really not is actually going to be the relationship that you've actually got with that data. So in the new economy, what we're realizing straight away is that it privacy is the new luxury. And we need to make sure that we've got a great relationship with the people that we've already got inside of our database. And what we've got to do is we've got to realize that in the new world, we've got to be more connected to people. And we've got to be more timely in how we do that. And we've got to make sure that our messaging is actually more tailored to their situation. So let's say, for example, that I was a buyer right now, but I'm an investor. So I'm looking to go and buy an investment property. And I'll just ask a lot of real estate agents this question. How many listings have you currently got available for sale on your website where there's already an existing lease agreement in place, where there's already an existing tenant in place? And naturally, you know what? There's already an existing return that that particular owner is getting on that particular asset. If I'm an investor who's looking to buy, I would love to know that. So out of the 100 listings that are available for sale on your brand's website, if 10 of them are in a position that right now they're currently already leased, then I'd like to know that these are the 10 properties that are already leased and what their current return is. By the way, in addition to that, here are 10 properties that we think would lease really well. And here's one or two properties that we believe could do with some capital improvement or maybe some sort of infrastructure upgrade that would allow you to get a better quality return. And that's what I'm starting to get you to think very differently, that we've got all of this amazing information that maybe we've just been literally sending everyone everything we've got available for sale rather than getting it really customized towards what that particular audience is really looking for. Now, what we realize is that inside of the world that we operate in is that customer experience is actually our brand and brand really is pricing power. So when we're talking about pricing power, if you have a high level of relationship with a seller in that lounge room, you will get a much better fee. If you're in a position that you don't have a great relationship or maybe you're one of six agents that are being interviewed in the local area and there's all same same from the consumer's point of view, if you can't see the difference, why pay the difference? They will often choose an agent that they feel comfortable with, but one that they can negotiate a lower fee with. So your job is to start to think about is that how do I get into more of the situations where I've actually got a high level of customer relationship with these people because I've been able to develop a great customer experience, which is really building out what my brand really means. Now, a lot of you know this, you know, you would go to a restaurant and say, hey, lovely to see you, Madam Sir, may I take your jackets? Yeah, sure. Uh, would you like some sparkling water? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, would you like some um, antiquities from New Zealand or the San Pellegrino from Italy? Now there's a choice on sparkling water. I bet you it's probably like $150 a head. And we've all been to the local cheer, cheap and cheerful where we'd go in there and say, hey, you know, sit down. Or, Do I have some water? Yeah, mate, taps in the corner. And you get up and go fill the water from the tap yourself. And literally it's probably a $10 or a $15 outing. So what you're starting to think very differently is, is this is about getting into real prowess we don't really care too much about what our competitors do, but we do care a lot about what we do specifically to go to be able to service our customers and to serve them in a much, much better way. 
And really it's about, you know, breaking it down into some buckets as Ali was talking about. And the first one is actually say, okay, great. Don't miss the opportunity to collect great data. Collection of data really is that is the essence is about getting great properties online because when you've got a great listing, it leads to lots and lots and lots of property inquiries. Those inquiries that you get in are really, really important because naturally that's building the database. A lot of you already have the automations built in so that when these property inquiries come through your major real estate portals, that ultimately those inquiries come into your inbox and if you've got the automation set up, it will automatically land sitting inside of your CRM, which will then sync across and be directly inside of your active pipe list. What you're actually doing with those property inquiries is, is that if there's a mobile number, you're probably going to call them uh, naturally to try to build some sort of form of relationship, book an appointment, get them down to the property. And you're probably going to build out some saved responses of an automatic template that you would send back to the majority of those property inquiries. Usually it's around things like open to inspections in different parts of the world that we work in, um, you know, with ActivePipe and MoxieWorks. There might be something specifically even around, you know, the price expectations, which could relate to some recent sales that are happening in that particular area. That property inquiry stuff is really important because it leads us into then understanding that the second biggest way to go and build a really good database without a doubt is being great at open for inspections. Now, one of the open for inspections that is often missed in our world is about that open for inspection the 30 minutes prior to an auction. Uh, if you happen to be an auction agent and you do do an open for inspection the 30 minutes prior, it's absolutely pivotal that you want to start thinking to make sure that you take all the details of the names and numbers of the people who walk through that open home just prior to the auction itself. That's a really important mechanism because if they're in a position that they're turning up to the open home part of the auction, then most likely they're going to be neighbours and this is actually how we're going to go and build that database. But what do you do with that data? You've got to make sure that it goes into the database, obviously through your CRM app, which automatically is going to sync across to your active part to then make sure you've got the right emails that are going out. Beyond that, it's about making sure that at auctions, that you're communicating with people about those auction results. So this is now where you're starting to see, okay, collection of data and collection of information is not just about the contact record, but also about knowing what's going on in your market. We know the major you know, um, publishers, they like to publish the auction results of an area, usually on a Sunday morning, about what actually happened the day before in the auctions across your particular area. If you can be first to market and if you're in an auction area where there are some auction results and you're able to communicate that to your sellers, it gives them something to talk to other people about on that Sunday afternoon or early evening as they go out for their dinner parties and catching up with friends at cafes and restaurants. Also, what we've seen has been a big evolution in the industry is probably ideas of initiatives. For example, we're going to be in the street today type stuff, or if you want to get a copy of the new market report, scan this QR code, and even in conversations around giveaways. And we've seen a lot of brands that have done that, you know, get your chance to be able to win a car, or maybe, for example, get a chance to have your mortgages repaid for you over the course of the next six months as a giveaway to try to induce lots of people to actually give their details for you to go out there and to go and give them a market appraisal. Now, this is one way of doing the business, but it is also too about producing an item of value. Now, in Australia, in the circa the 1990s, early 2000s, some American trainers came over and the American trainers were talking about a CMA, some sort of form of like a comparative market analysis. And what that really was, was a market report about what's actually been uh, selling in your market over the course of the last 90 days. It was very customized. It was usually done by street. It was usually some sort of form of a PDF file. But the new version is that we live in a digital world where things are moving quickly. And now you're in a position that you actually say, okay, great, can I get systems that can automate this? So sitting in the back of active pipe, you can actually allow it to have a set within, say, a 1.5 kilometer radius that every single time that we list or sell a property of a similar type, I want it to notify this particular group of contacts, being people that live in that radius that we know that are either a past client of ours or maybe a past market appraisal of ours. I happen to own an apartment down here in Carlton in, in Melbourne where I am today. And interesting enough, the agent that I know in that area, every single time that his brand actually lists or sells a property that's similar to the apartment that I own, I also get a notification of that listing or that sale. And that's great automation, really helping you to actually build out what's happening in market. It is also too about then starting to understand that you're starting to build this digital set of audiences. And that's what we go to call lookalike audiences, often done a lot through your social advertising. But what you will see in those social advertising is the ability to be able to extract the email address of people when they're interested in your offer. So if you'd like a copy of the market report, putting the contact details here, it automatically pre-fills the field, presses submit, and then you then get that data to then be able to suck into your CRM and then again into ActivePipe to make sure that you can drive that overall momentum of database growth. Now, this capturing of data is also about things like digital opt-in forms. 
a lot of you will be very familiar with an opt-in form. It's the thing that literally a buyer fills out when they inquire on a property on a portal. But on your own website, do you have digital opt-in forms for people to be able to register themselves as a buyer? Do you have the ability for someone to be able to register themselves to download a copy of your market report? And this is usually facilitated through something better known as a landing page. If say, for example, you're working in a particular market area, let's say for example in Melbourne, find out the latest and what's happening with Melbourne prices, put in your email address, mobile number and street address, and we'll give you a copy of the Melbourne market report. And this is a really important conversation to actually understand, okay, what are we doing in our digital initiatives, from all the great things that we do in our social tiles and all of those things to make sure that we're leading it to a capture form or a link to a capture form to then be able to get the details of that consumer and to build the size of the database. Now, naturally, we've done that for a long time in our business with the daily email. Then we do the weekly coaching tip and a thing called the weekend now, but it's about building the size of that data. Now, then also a lot of people don't realize that one of the most amazing ones is actually social and particularly LinkedIn. But LinkedIn allows you to actually export all of your contacts out, including the email addresses, if they have specifically not opted themselves out of that feature. So I'm not sure if you realize, but you can go into your contacts inside of LinkedIn and you can go file export and you can literally get their details, which allows you to be able to take that data and to wash that back into your CRM and actually sync over to the email lists that are being inside of your ActivePipe experience. Now, this is a really interesting conversation because you start thinking about that and you go, Hey, Josh, to be honest, I, I really only have one or two of those that are actually working for me right now. So I'm very, very good at opens. And, and to be honest, I'm, I'm pretty good with the inquiries. But that was a good pickup about the auctions or I don't actually have an opt-in form for people to get a copy of my market report. And I could just have a link on the bottom of my email. If you want to get a copy of the latest market report, click here. And then naturally when they go there, they then have to fill in their details. Now, what you want to consider is that once you're really clear about how you actually go to generate your leads and how you actually get lots of people into the database, which I'm gonna say is usually gonna be through property inquiries and open homes, then you've then got to work out, and this is the language that Ali was using earlier today, what is the trigger that actually means that something happens in terms of the journey? So as an example, and hopefully this happens to no one, let's say for example that your car was crashed into and it was now no longer drivable, and the insurance company said, okay, great, no problems, we're now gonna get you to go and buy a new car. That trigger event of the of someone crashing into your car has now meant that now all of a sudden you're a buyer and you have to go out and purchase a new car today. So this is an interesting thing that inside of the residential real estate world, categories are really important because we wanna see what are the specific triggers that have actually happened in the digital environment and what are the specific triggers that are happening in what we've got to call real world experiences that we're learning. So a great example, all of a sudden Ali turns up and he starts bidding at an auction and you go, whoa, I didn't realize that he was a real genuine buyer. And that's now gonna move the category that he sits inside of the database. And when that moves the category, that might trigger a different style of email that we might send to that particular person. And so this is about really getting on top of our digital marketing efforts. The first one to think about is that the biggest category inside of any database is gonna be buyers. You've got hundreds, if not thousands of buyers that you get to meet on a regular and consistent basis. And what the goal is, is that you want to transition those people from being a buyer into moving into your buyer hit list. So what are the trigger events? And normally I get you to write these out manually first before we're going to think about what actually happens in the digital world. So a buyer who moves into buyer hit list has probably satisfied one of these conditions. Uh, they might have bought a copy of a pest and building report. Maybe they've come back for a second look on a property. Maybe they've made an offer on a property. Maybe they're in a position that they're registering to bid as a requirement in some parts of the states and countries that we work in. Maybe they're just registering to bid because that's just what we do now is good practice that we learned through COVID. Off the back of that, maybe they're in a position that they're actually bidding at an auction or we've become aware that that particular buyer sold their house last weekend, which means they now have to buy in order to be able to dovetail the settlement. Now, some of those are real world experiences because you're seeing them on the ground. Other times you're actually seeing that experience because you're tracking what's actually happening in the digital world, seeing about those listings and sales as they actually go to progress. Now our goal is that we take our buyer to our buyer seller and then understanding that inside of our core market area, every single person who owns a home is actually a potential seller. Now Jim's mowing is a great example of that here in Australia, about a million transactions a month where they're actually mowing lawns to people that own houses. So in other words, they've got a really big database of lots of people that are actually potential sellers. And what you wanna think about is that how do you do some sort of collaboration with them as an example, that if ever they found someone who was interested in selling in your particular area, that maybe you could arrange in a referral agreement, which is clearly disclosed, 
to allow you the opportunity to be able to get access to that data. Now, those potential sellers, the goal is to actually transition or to migrate them into what we actually got to call a market appraisal. Now, this is about not going out there just to give them a price, but this is going out there to really understand the problem of the client. And if we understand the problem of the client, then we can then understand what we need to do to unlock or to actually get the client into a position that then they can go live to market. Now, market appraisals are such an important part because we really think that the delivery of price is about red light, orange, like green light. Red light, we can't move. Orange, we might be able to. Green, we definitely can. And if that's actually the case, then that will then allow us to transition those people into our seller hit list. These are the one, two, three, four, five people that we know that are going to move into that. Now, some people might use systems like Trello as an example, or Asana, where they've got like a Canva board, or actually just a manual system with like literally some yellow sticky notes. And what they're doing is they're going, hey, I reckon that this Josh guy is going to sell in April because he's going to find out about his job relocation to go and work with the guys who actually works in LA. And so you start thinking very differently. If that's actually the case, then I've got to work with him. When he finds out about that job relocation in April, he becomes an immediate seller. Now that's interesting because it then transitions to the next category. Now these are the forgotten few, but the really important parts of any business is all of the past clients that have actually bought fruit through you. Most agents don't actually think about what they do with their past clients and particularly in the email automation space. What are we doing to make sure that there's an annual checkup email that goes out? Can we provide these people with maybe a monthly what's on, what's happened in our marketplace? Can we give them a weekly version of what's actually being listed and being sold? if they're really interested in real estate as a sport, not just something they did to transact. We've also then got past clients that have sold with us. Again, where did they move to? That's a really important thing in terms of database hygiene, because wherever they move to might actually be a future market for us. Then we then go and have a look at all the people that we go to call potential landlords. You know, we meet these people all the time. They walk into an open for inspection. They say, hey, I'm looking to buy. I want to buy another property to add to my portfolio. Our goal is to not only nurture them, but to get them in touch with our our, our property management growth specialists or our BDM inside of the PM world to then move them into being landlords. And this is the thing that a lot of people forget. How many of our landlords have got a principal place of residence and would like us to go out there and to give them an idea on what that principal place of residence is worth? How many of the landlords that we know are in a position that would also like to go and maybe buy another property that's sitting inside of their portfolio? Now, one of the big things that's happening in Victoria where I am today, there's obviously some changes to the government legislation. And there's some conversations about what's going on with some changes to land tax. That might actually mean that some of those landlords may actually have to go and sell some properties and maybe some past clients of yours might sell some of their additional properties as a part of that conversation. Landlords then go into past landlords. This is so fascinating inside of a business. What we go to call archive landlords in the business. All of a sudden, the landlord sells the investment property. They're no longer a landlord. The property manager goes archive, not realizing that, hang on a second, they've got a principal place of residence which could actually be a significant lead source. So when you start realizing it, what you're realizing is that there's, there's so many lead sources for data capture and the opportunities to then categorize them correctly. Now you've also got people better known as suppliers. So these suppliers might be painters, plumbers, electricians, roofers, people that come to do cleaning, gardening, you name all of that. These suppliers know lots of people. So do you have them inside of your database? Are they set to receive a very specific email from you on a particular frequency of basis that is relevant to them and their world. You've then got this great group of referrers, a group of people that refer your business on a regular and consistent basis. What do you actually go to send to them? So what that leads to is that, you know, now you've started to think, okay, how do I go to capture the lead? And you've got to get really clear on what it is that you do. Then I'm going to start to think about, okay, what categories have I now got sitting inside of my database? And then I've got to then go and build a plan around what I'm actually going to do in terms of the content of what these people would actually receive. Now, one of the key things that we've really loved is about, you know, the journey builder that sits inside of Active Campaign, uh, of, of Active Path, of getting you really clear about what it is that you do, because the content is about saying, what are the items of value that I'm actually going to go and send out? So what you do in the Active Path world, you go, okay, great. I want to go and have a quick look at the templates that I'm going to send and then marry that across the specific list that are sitting inside of my database. And this is an important conversation because you might say, okay, my greatest item of value that I can build in the template is a weekly view of what has been listed and what has been sold in the course of the last seven days. Now, this is not new, uh, but it is an idea and a concept that it, you've got to get right, but it is a great item of value. Um, I received it in my area in Balmain where I happen to live, and it gives me a list of all the new listings and a list of all the sales that have been made over the course of the last seven days. Uh, it's by any real estate agency in the area, the prices are disclosed if they're publicly available information. 
in certain sections of New Zealand, that's not possible unless it is a public auction um, and it is clearly disclosed because of the auction result. But you get the idea, understand the rules and regulations of your territory, state or country, but actually knowing what's actually available on market today. You go to the major real estate portals, you type out the address, the bed, bath, car, the price guide if it's publicly available information. Again, you go to the real estate portals, have a look at the sold results, and you build this email. Now, this might go out at 8.05 a.m., for example, every single Friday morning, and it assists someone like me who is a buyer or seller to actually realize, hey, what's new to market that I could buy? Is there anything new to market that's similar to my property? And, and what did it, what's it, what are they asking for it? So I get a bit of an idea on what's happening to asking prices. And in addition to that, what has actually been sold? Is there anything that's similar to mine? And what did it make? And is there anything that I was considering buying? And what, um, what did it sell for? So I get a bit of an idea about what's happening between what I thought it would sell for and what it's actually transacting for in the market. Now, this is important because then you then start to think, okay, great. If I've got lifestyle type buyers, then how do I actually help people who want to look for very specific things? And that could be people that are looking for properties that are single level. In an era where we have lots and lots of baby boomers, where knees and hips and ankles could be an issue, and they would love to pay more for a property without stairs. Or maybe, for example, it's lock and leave as they want to tour around Australia with their caravan, or maybe they want to do something that's architecturally significant in the beautiful foothills of Queenstown in New Zealand. Your job is to start to understand what you actually sell. Here is a great example of that. It's not just a list of like 5 billion different photos. What we find is a lot of the email clients now, particularly the email clients on your mobile phone, will start to clip the message if you have too many photos appearing in that particular email. So this is now the evolution of maybe some key photos throughout that email, but now some great text of some lists that contextually make sense. This is a list of properties that have currently been leased for investors. These are properties that we think would lease really well. These are properties that would actually have in terms of development potential. That's that investment and landlord's first approach. The items of value email, lifestyle, single level homes for families, single level homes for individuals and couples, lock and leave type properties. These are properties that we think that are architecturally significant. And what you're doing is you're building up your repertoire of what you actually go to send to market. Now, if you happen to be in an auction area, the auction results email like this one here, a list of uh, all the properties, the bed, bath, car, the actual uh, dollar points associated with those and the active bidders or not, being able to build this actually really builds tenacity. You know, your job to be able to make sure that you're better than the local media outlets because you really know what's actually happening in market. Now, that's kind of interesting because then literally off market or only available on our website is a great way to actually build a reason for people to be signed up to your email. They can only get exclusive information, exclusive content by directly being with you. And this is actually what you want to do is that that should actually be the magnet or the number one reason why someone would part with their personal information, better known as their email address, because they actually get a significant benefit from you, better known as actually getting this particular first to market advisory type service. And this is really important because what you're doing inside of ActivePipe is you're building out a set of infrastructure that then allows you to go and play at your absolute best. And really what you're learning here is that, oh, hang on a second, Josh, I've thought about capture, I've thought about categories, but I didn't really think about what I send to those particular people to make sure that I'm actually relevant. Now, if I send something to you and I'm relevant, then that relevancy will drive the frequency of the communication. That's like the old school thing. Could I ring you 20 times in a day? Probably not. But if I was helping you to put the biggest deal of your career together, then without a doubt, then ultimately I could ring you 20 times because we're helping to go backwards and forwards in that negotiation. So relevancy drives the frequency of communication and frequency just needs to be consistent to build that relationship over time. Now, why this is important is that literally I just go to people and say, well, you know, how do we go to build this audience? And that's really what it's about. It's about saying that, you know what, it's not just a database. It's actually about building the audience of your database. And it's really about making sure how do you actually have a plan to go and source that content? First of all, getting someone in your team, or maybe it's you, or maybe it's your head of marketing to work inside of ActivePipe to build out the templates of what the templates look like. And the hardest work is getting it done the first time. Once you've done it the first time, then you get to rework the templates to make sure they're relevant to what's actually going on in your marketplace. And then you've got to start to think, okay, great, what does it look like graphically? How does it appear, for example, when it ends up on our mobile phone? How does it appear when it ends up on a screen to make sure that we've got consistency of this? A little bit of planning goes a long, long way. So for example, at the start of this year, we redesigned our own email templates for our daily email. We redesigned our own templates for the weekend that goes out on the weekend. We redesigned our templates for thought provoking that went out yesterday. 
And when you rebuild those templates, now you start thinking, okay, great, um, now I've got them, who do I send them to? And it gets you to start to think differently about the growth of the data sitting inside of that database. Then one day, when does it go out? So 8.05 a.m., for example, on a Friday morning is a great time to send people a list of what's been listed and what's been sold in the last seven days because it allows them to get their planning together for the open for inspections they're going to be visiting on the weekend. Then beyond that is it then getting really clear about how we actually go to measure the success. So the measurement of success may well be beyond open rates now to actually having a look at the cleats. What are people actually clicking on? And this is one of the great conversations is to actually realize the content. And what we realize is that although you've got this phenomenal system in ActivePipe, don't get lazy because you've got to go and re-update the first paragraph. You know, it gets quite tiring. Here at this particular real estate agency, we like to keep you up with the latest of what's going on. Here's the list of those recent listings and sales. And now that's kind of nice the first time, but it gets very tiring by the fifth time I've read it five weeks down the track. If you could say, hey, look, you know, the RBA held interest rates, uh, the interesting conversation, there are some changes with what's going on with land tax here in Victoria. If you'd like to find out what's happening with your property, then simply click on this link below, which allows you to then move into a position and it's an email or they hit reply, whatever the story is. By the way, here is a list of what's happened in our market in the last seven days. Because it's timely, it's relevant, it's providing information, it changes the way that you actually think, feel and act about that particular brand. Now, I love that because it's really about getting into the great conversation around something we go to call database health. Now, database health is kind of important because one of the things is that we go out there and we go, oh my goodness, I built this massive database. And how many times do you hear a real estate agent say that in a listing presentation? We have over 608,000 buyers in our database. But yet, when it actually comes to them turning up and doing that open for inspection and no one shows up at that open house, what was the value of those 608,000 contacts? It was zero for that seller. And that's what they think that they were buying. So database health actually starts to have a conversation and, and this is I know shocking to understand, but it's actually okay for someone trying to subscribe. And the question is, what do you actually do with those unsubscribes? So what you wanna think about is, is that literally sometimes your sending ability will get impacted if you're sending emails to people that don't want them. So if someone, for example, reports you as a spam sender or they report you for maybe sending uh, unsolicited emails, and they keep on unsubscribing um, and they're in a position that they keep on reporting you as spam, that can impact on how you show up in other people's inboxes later on and whether or not they put you into the promotions category or whether or not they're seen as a, as a first source email, you know, in terms of those different inboxes between Outlook and the Gmail interface, depending on what your client's using. So I look at unsubscribes as being really healthy because if un someone unsubscribes to me, that's what we go to call a trigger event. The reason why this particular person would unsubscribe at this point is because they've just bought something. Under the Privacy Act here in Australia, where I am today, we have five days to jump on the phone and go and ring someone and let them know uh, and, and be in touch with them uh, before we're not allowed to again. So I start to get on the phone and I ring them. Hey, Hannah, it's Josh. I thought I'd give you a call. I noticed you unsubscribed from my email. Normally when people do that, it's because they've just bought. Have you been successful in purchasing? Yes, I have. Congratulations. And, and, and are you going to be moving into that particular property or are you going to be leasing it out? Oh, Josh, I'm going to be leasing it out. Bang, property management late. Oh, no, I'm, I'm going to be moving into it. Okay, had you bought locally before? Yeah, I have. Okay, great. What are your plans with your existing now that you've bought the next? Oh, I'm going to lease it out. Bang, property management late. Oh, no, I'm going to need to sell it. Bang, sales lead. Uh, have you bought locally before? No, I haven't. This was my first time. You know what I love to do, Hannah, for people just like you that are bought in the local area? I like to send a little email once a month. It gives you a bit of a list of all the listings and all the sales that happen in the area. Um, would it be okay if I added you to that? Might just help you to make sure that you're really keeping a pace of what's actually happening in the local market. Would that be okay? Yeah, that'd be great. And just to make sure I'm super relevant for the ones that I send you, what was the address of the property that you bought? Now, this is really good quality data collection. You're now putting people into that different category. They're not just a buyer anymore. They've actually no longer in the buyer category. They've now moved to your potential seller category. Or maybe you've identified that you actually think they're going to be a potential landlord or a seller hit list category. And what is the specific email communication that you're actually going to send to that category? You might say, oh, Josh, this is so hard. No, no, it's actually really easy because once you build out your one, two, three, four, five templates and you'll work them out and you say, you know what? I'm just going to commit to what's been listed and what's sold. And no, I'm just going to do the auction results one. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to do the one where the system automatically sends it on my behalf. If ever there's a listing or sale within 1.5 kilometers radius of the asset that they own, that's when things will change for you. So go for growth. And literally what you've got to do is you've got to measure, you've got to really know your number of new subscribers. 
So I'd love you to know that. Okay, great. On Saturday, your team went out there, you met 100 people. How many people were added to the database? And out of those people that were added to the database, how many of those people are new to the database versus people that we already knew? So I'm getting a bit of an idea about what's actually happening to subscriber growth. And I'm also tracking that metrics every, every week to identify the number of people that are unsubscribing. So either I've got to improve the quality of my content or what people are actually getting, they're in a position they've already been satisfied. And so they're no longer that client. So we're going to move them to a different category in the database. And that's why the triggers are such an important part of what you do. Now, literally, there's a bit of a, you know, that, that metrics, it's like, oh, the total size of the database. And we've seen people, by the way, who've gone out and bought like, you know, 18 million followers on their Instagram, but literally only one person ever likes what they post. And you kind of get the idea. It's not about the size. It really is how you use it. And this is about really thinking that the measurement is shifting and it's actually about engagement or the number of people that are clicking the links that are sitting inside of that email. Now, our job is to say, okay, great. Um, we've got to have some tools that can actually really allow you to clean up data fast. And, you know, this is one of the scariest things. I remember that, you know, each time that I know a client who turns on uh, active pipe, they get really worried because if they make the decision to use the survey tool, all of a sudden they get all these unsubscribes in the first few days. And the reality of it is, is that you kind of have had a list there that really wasn't hygienic and it needs to be cleaned up. But what the survey tool does is it allows you to recategorize where people are out and to work out who's who in the zoo to identify the best people. You might have 100,000 people in the database, but you're only going to do 50 transactions this year. So don't be surprised when people actually unsubscribe, but that's the chance to get on the phone and go and call them, see where they're at, read, get into that database, log into your active pipe and actually see what's happening. Now, this is where automation plays a massive part because this is the idea that can consumers actually update their search criteria. One of the things that you'll do is that you can actually see that inside of your, uh, your active pipe Templates, you have the ability for someone to literally say, update or manage my profile. You can change the language on that button. When they click on that, that automatically allows them to specify areas, price points, bed, bath, car, all of the above. And that will automatically go into your system and then automatically sync back into your CRM to update that buyer's category. This is about how you're going to stay on top of managing thousands of relationships to identify the very best buyers that are actually in the marketplace today. And this is actually that ability for them using your email address to add, modify, and update. And for you to start to think about, you know, the triggers. Uh, one of the things that my client did recently is, is that every single time that someone buys or sells through him, he makes sure that he connects with them on LinkedIn. Every single time that he sees that they've got a new job, he reaches out and connects with them and just confirms that he's actually got the right email address for them. Because they might uh, inadvertently unsubscribe, but you didn't realize they unsubscribe because they've actually changed jobs and they're now working somewhere else. And that might be the precursor to them buying, selling, or doing something at a residential property level. And this is that, that whole idea that, you know, making sure that you're building relationships, the SMS post a private inspection or an open house, you know, hey there, I'm lovely to meet you today. I've got a great property I'd love you to send you. What's the best email address for me to be able to forward a copy of the documentation? You, know, you get that email address and looking for alternate ways to do it and thinking about where automation is happening where people are buying pest building reports and literally then you're referring off to solicitors, conveyances and finance. So here's a great idea on a sold template. Let's say that you've got a just sold email template. This particular property at 12 Jones Street is now sold. Here are, another three, here are three others that you should now consider. And so what that's actually about doing is it's about buyer transfers from one property to the next one because you're actually saying, hey, this one is sold, but here are three to consider. And that's what a lot of people kind of miss. They go, oh, this one's sold. Well done, you legend rather than actually really helping me on my buying journey on something I can go and purchase. So what are the fundamentals? Well, never miss an opportunity to grow data. I'd love to meet you. Any chance I could send you a quick email of what's happening in the market every week. If you just did that, every single person that you meet, when you drop your car off and you go and get new tires on it, when you're in a position that you go down to the store and buy some, some dinner for, for tonight, you're actually in a position that you're starting to go and build that data. The quality of your data will determine the speed of your market dominance. You know, it's not about having a big database, which is really dirty. It's actually about spending the time to go through and to till the field. You know, we are constantly updating the details of our clients because as they move between brands or they start one or they're in a position that naturally they upgrade and they change their email address, we're making sure that we're staying on top of that stuff. And with new technologies, if data is going to become equal and relationships are not, then you've got to spend the time to go and build out those relationships. There are data sets within the data sets that are actually worthwhile chasing. And that's that whole conversation to think that in your business right now, there might be a ton of archived landlords that no one's doing anything with. And if you get in front of those people, then that would change the course of your business. 
You got to leverage every previous relationship that the business has ever had. Don't lose faith. The past clients, the past market appraisals are a closed audience that your competitors cannot get to. And so this is the chance for you to be able to get back in front of those people and to do something that's seriously relevant. Just don't start blasting them a whole range of you know, properties you've got available for sale. Get back on the phone, re opt them back in, get them into that copy of what's been listed, what's been sold, whether or not it's the weekly edition or the monthly edition of that, but literally learn how to go and play in a much more powerful way. What I get you to think about is that really in life, a well-disciplined approach changes your market dominance. And this is where you've got to invest early and always do your best. I would say to you that if you're starting out day one, build out your one, two, three, four templates, know exactly what they look like, spend the time on that content. And then once you've got those built into your active pipe, then start thinking specifically about what you're doing and then make sure that you can actually send it out to those people. And I know that I started with a daily email with one person, 12,500 people or something, get that around the world right now. It's a really clean list. It's updated all the time. The benefit of that is you're starting to build market momentum. And Ali, let's uh, jump over. I know that we're probably going to have some great questions in the last few minutes here with the guys about this database revolution and how to really drive some long-term uh, result for uh, as a real estate agent. But start anything differently about what it is that you actually do and, and how you got to perform at your best. Now, I know that's fast, but you know today I really wanted to get the foundational principles right and to get you to start to think a little bit about the systems or of how it works of how do we collect our leads, how do we categorize our leads, what are the templates that we've got, how do we build the content, and then how do we make sure that that database health is actually being done through simple things like surveys, the ability for the consumer to update their own detail, and then moving into a position that then I can start to think about clever automations, that that now triggers something in the real world to call them about an unsubscribe, which actually might be a resubscribe, but to a different list in my email database to really make sure I'm going and playing at my best. Mate, hopefully there's a few things in there for you. And uh, guys, uh, feel free. Any questions, please put them in the box. We've got a couple of minutes here for you. Uh, any uh, any things in the chat, we're more than happy to answer them. Uh, Ali, over to you. What, what are some thoughts? Let's have a bit of a, a nice little tussle and a good conversation. So first off, let me say uh, for everyone who's uh, joining this webinar, a recording of this will be available. This is the type of content that I would insist on watching once, twice, three times to make sure we're capturing all the low hanging fruit that Josh has been talking about today. Uh, while we wait for some questions, uh, a couple things really stood out to me uh, about today's presentation, Josh. I think the, the headline for me is the size of your network is the size of your net worth. That mm -hmm. really resonates with me because we talk a lot about a statistic that CoreLogic released uh, about a year and a half ago, that four and a half percent of the average agent's database is likely to transact in a given 12 month period. That doesn't mean they're gonna transact with you. That means they're gonna transact with somebody. And quite often these contacts are shared across multiple competing agencies and agents. So it really does become a matter of who is providing that value to get that advantage in the lounge room. You also mentioned that relationship determines fee. That's powerful because now how am I building value when I don't have an immediate lounge room opportunity for you? That's mm -hmm. where Active Pipe wants to help. So I did some quick mm -hmm. math, Josh. Uh, average agent has 3,000 contacts in their database. If you were to attempt to provide a 10 minute outbound phone call across all 3,000 of those contacts, that would literally take you 67 days. Assuming mm -hmm. you work through lunch, you work seven and a half mm -hmm. hours a day. You don't take a day off and everybody answers the phone on the first try. Easy assumptions, right? 67 mm -hmm. days just to reach out and to talk to someone. Tools like Active Pipe can do that for you at scale with the mm -hmm. right messaging because you've taken the time to send out that data discovery survey. You understand what that client wants and using the power of our automation, you can provide them with the information that's gonna give you the advantage when it comes time to have that lounge room discussion. Uh, and, so I and, wanted I'll, to point that out. out. Like, go sure. ahead. Yeah. Um, what, what I'm thinking straight away is that when I hear all of that sort of stuff, I go, yeah guys, like once the email has gone out, like what actually happens in terms of the trigger events? So if you can go in and you go into the reporting mechanism, you see these six people have just updated their buying criteria. That tells me they're buyers, they're hot to chop. They're the sort of people I want to try and get more private buyer appointments. If I've just seen that I've just got seven unsubscribes, don't be offended by that. Get on the phone and ring those people and find out about that unsubscribe because they now might be a potential seller or now they've actually just become a potential landlord straight away because they've just bought an investment property through a competitor. And it's like, you know, people are trying to tell you things but you're not reading the signals to work out that that's actually what's happening. So 
you know, we used to go and call it like the frequent clicker report of who are the people that are frequently clicking. Now, I don't get on the phone and say that. Oh, hey, Ali, I just want to let you know you clicked on 12 Jones Street 67 times. Anything you want to tell me? Yeah, like that's a little bit like stalkerish. But what, what we do actually realize is that that's actually where technology has gone. Is it's about actually this, this conversation around what we've got to call intent data. Now, you might see that people like kind of like they talk about harvesting the intent data. Yet yeah, you've actually got people that are in front of you that are showing intent, but you don't think about what to do with them. So let me show you a real world example. Uh, all of a sudden, Ali, you're out there and you're bidding at auction. Agents never met you before. Oh, okay, great, mate. Best of luck with it. And you start bidding. You don't buy. And then they walk up to you at the end of it and say, oh, sorry, commiserations, mate. Better luck on the next one. And then they walk off. That's poor agency. What great agency is about, hang on a second, I've got a guy with a checkbook here. He's ready to buy a million dollar property. All I need to do is just match him up with another million dollar property and there's the sale. And if he buys that million dollar property, he's got a $500,000 apartment that he actually needs to sell. So the lesson is about literally going deeper. And if you actually provide great service to people, it changes everything about how you win, the quality of the fee that you get, what actually goes on. And so it's so funny because people go, oh yeah, it's just email. No, 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 this is actually about a whole evolution in the process of how you serve people, whether or not it's digitally or physically, because you understand the trigger events. So like we used to get these massive unsubscribes every December, Ali, and I was really worried about it. Lots of people would unsubscribe from our daily email. And I was like, oh no, I, do I just write really bad emails every December? And then I started ringing people up and I was like, oh, hey, uh, Ali, I know you unsubscribe. Oh no, no, Josh, I didn't unsubscribe. Oh, well, yeah, you did. No, I didn't. I had you uh, uh, Ali at, at Actipipe. Oh no, my, my email address is now Ali at MoxieWorks. Oh, what's happened there? I'll now join with our American parent company and we're doing some amazing stuff across the world now. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that was a moment. And so that's what you got to start thinking. The same's happening for your buyer sellers, but you're not picking up on the trigger point to actually say, you know what, I need to go and do something with that. And that's, I think, what Kaylee's saying here that literally, you know, she's really loving that idea about, you know, the unsubscribe process and learning that. Um, but how many real estate agents are across Australia and New Zealand right now are in a position that they have got unsubscribes and they haven't called them? And they've missed the window to call them based on the, you know, the privacy protection legislation we've got in Australia. It might be different in New Zealand. I'm not across that. But learning about those things is a really important mechanism. Absolutely. And thank you so much for the uh, comment, Kaylee. Really appreciate it. Um, and, you know, it, it's something that we talk about quite often uh, when we are, you know, privileged enough to sit in front of real estate uh, agents and our offices is don't fear the unsubscribes. And I'm actually going to take a, uh, this opportunity to also sound the trumpet. Uh, we have recently integrated YouTube into Active Pipes email building capabilities. Uh, if you've been in a conversation with me over the last six months, I assure you, you've heard this, uh, but I'm going to repeat it. Get out of your comfort zone. Everybody mm. has a state-of-the-art studio in their hand here mm. through Apple or Samsung. There's nothing stopping you from getting out of that comfort zone and communicating directly with your database. You can literally upload it and within minutes have it sent out to your database. And that is really going to pay dividends when it comes to fostering a human connection, even though it's through online, as well as trying to stand out and create that brand familiarity for yourself. Uh, so really want to encourage people to take advantage of these tools. The last thing that I wanted to mention, um, Josh, based off of what you're spoke about today was really the un understanding that digital intent. Uh, I will admit to everyone on this webinar, I like to watch a lot of crime dramas. And what is the first thing they do when you're a suspect? They go to your Google search history because that digital intent is more likely to shed light on what you've been up to behind the scenes. It is no different in our industry. Uh, the average buyer and seller begins doing research months before they've ever approached an agent. So if you have that inclining that someone is out there doing that research, you're positioned to be at the right place at the right time to have that conversation, which can then ensure that you never miss an opportunity, which is the entire intent behind today's webinar and working through Active Pipe. Uh, Josh, it looks like we're coming very close to the end of our session today. We don't have any more questions. Uh, that's how clear and amazing the uh, guidance that you've given us today has been. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that this recording will be available. So if you have uh, teammates that were not able to attend today, feel free to pass this link along. Uh, the more people that know about the power of digital intent, I think the better off our industry will be. Uh, and Josh, I'll turn it over to you for any final words. 
Uh, Ali, you, you made me scared there for a second. It made me think that if anyone's out there dating, just ask for a copy of your partner's uh, search requests on Google. That might give you a <laughs> bit of an idea. But he's actually really understanding that, guys, you know, it's a really easy process to build it. Make the decision to go there and you'll do some pretty amazing things on the inside of your business. The most important part, consistency always builds out high quality brand and quality of content is the thing that actually builds those relationships. So spend the time to go and do it. It'll make a massive difference on the inside of your business. Uh, have a lovely weekend and we look forward to seeing you inside of our next active active pipe uh, little webinar fantastic thanks guys thank you cheers